planted in the desert of Manati. For a hundred years, I've been searching for humanity in vain. A misfit, because I don't ask creeper like for shelter, for support. A misfit, because oak like I invite, I seduce you into my shade. The roving bee, shining with pollen, comes visiting. And in a passing encounter that was supposed to pass for love, impregnates me. I feed this being suddenly implanted within me with my very vitality. And yet, for all my efforts, the fruit is not for me to take pride in. I fulfill the ideal of motherhood. I give birth, but the generations don't carry my name. If I do not flower for one year, I'm barren. If during a storm, some of my branches tangle in the foliage of my neighbor, as we try to shield the other from the tempest's onslaught, I'm transgressive. And my branches are brutally cut for the man to move on ahead. No strings attached. <coughs> Time passes as the struggle for survival continues. Soon, the chlorophyll in my leaves loses its greenness and almost immediately the manly axe hits mercilessly at my once fertile womb. The brownish sap, blood, gushes out but no tears, alas. All seem to have dried up with the milk. As I fall to the ground with a resigned sigh, I see the green sapling planted next to me smile lovingly as the wind caresses her. Unaware as yet of the demands about to be made, I wish I could tell her that dreams are not for us. I wish I could warn her to take undiluted pleasure in the riotous colors of her petals, the lush velvet of her sepals. She will have to wait another hundred years like I have. I wish I could warn her that she is born a hundred years too soon like I was. Life moves on. So do we. Writing not, not so much the right things, but the ones of solidarity.